maybe the planning is watching some YouTube videos of other combat systems, or maybe the planning is, yeah. you know, literally when it comes to getting reference material, like, like you said with the blender thing, uh, a fantastic example of this is if you're making uh, levels. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> hey Charles, how's it going? I was just watching one of your stream clips. Yeah, I know. Your comment just popped up in my notifications. <laughs> wow, that was fast. <laughs> yep. So, what's going on? Well, remember last week when I said I was going to try to recreate Snake in Unity? Uh, yeah, you were going to make a couple of retro games to get some actual experience finishing projects. How's that coming along? To be honest, it's not. Oh no, what happened? I don't know, man. I mean, I've played Snake a million times, but I keep getting stuck with this mental block every time I open up Unity. I just don't know where to begin. Hmm. Well, have you made any progress? Not really. I mean, I messed around with a couple approaches, but I don't have anything solid. Hmm. Doodling. Doodling? Yeah, it's this term that Jason and I coined for game development. It's when you create a project in Unity without any real planning, so you just sort of mess around until something works. Like an artist doodling in a sketchbook? Exactly. None of an artist's doodles actually become works of arts themselves. They're just like practice sessions. Just like my project. Yep. But I want to finish my project. How do I get some actual work done? Well, based on the comment you left on my stream clip, it sounds like you already know the answer. I need a plan, right? Bingo. Ugh. Does that mean I have to make a game design document? I've looked at a ton of templates and there are a lot of sections to fill out. No, no, you don't have to go that far. Thank goodness. Don't get me wrong, game design documents do have their plays, especially if you're looking to work with a publisher. But you don't need to make one for every project, especially a small one like yours. Okay, so then what? Should I root up on Scrum? I hear that's supposed to be good. Scrum is great, but let's not overcomplicate things with the methodology. At least, not yet. Okay. Your project is simple, so let's keep the planning simple too. That sounds good to me. Good. To start, I recommend collecting some reference material. Reference material? Like, Pictures of the game Snake? Yeah, pictures, gameplay videos, GIFs, anything you can reference during development. Really? You know, I've played Snake before. <laughs> so have I, but it doesn't mean I can recreate the entire game from memory. I'm sure I can get the gist of it, but I can guarantee there's at least one aspect that I don't know off the top of my head. Oh yeah? Like what? Like, um, what happens when you eat a pellet? The snake grows. Well, of course, but how? Does the snake's body extend from the tail or from the point at which you ate the pellet? And what happens when you eat the pellet? Does the game pause for a beat to allow the snake to grow or does it keep ticking on at a fixed pace? I don't know. Exactly. Unexpected questions like that will come up constantly during development and you don't want to have to stop to figure out the answer to each one. Hmm. All right. I could buy that. And it isn't like it's a new technique either. Artists use reference material all the time, so why shouldn't game developers? Fair enough. So step one is to collect reference material. You got it. In fact, I actually recreated Snake myself a couple of years ago, and I may still have the reference material that I used handy. Ha, huh, no way. Yep, here it is on Evernote. Go ahead and open up this link. Hmm. Oh yeah, this is great. Yeah, I'm glad I found it. I think this will work out just fine for you. I hope so. All right, so we've got our reference material. The next step is to break the project down into manageable pieces. How do I do that? Well, at this stage, we've got a much clearer idea of what you actually need to develop. So you want to capture that in the form of tasks. Oh, you're talking about an agile board like Trello, right? Sort of. An agile board is part of the Scrum methodology and Trello is just a project management tool for organizing your tasks. Oh, okay. But yeah, you're on the right track. Just remember, we're trying to keep it simple. So instead of using a tool like Trello, we're gonna use post-it notes. <laughs> I'm serious. You got any lying around? Actually, uh, yes, I do. Great. You also want an empty place on your wall to stick them to. Uh, yeah, I got one right next to me. Good. Go ahead and use three separate post-its to create a to-do, in-progress, and done columns. Okay. 
Once you're done with that, you'll need to populate the to-do column by creating a post-it for each task, and then updating the position of each task as you make progress. Oof, that's a lot of post-its. Yeah, it's a little bit of work, but it's well worth it. Just keep it as simple as possible. All right, so for example, one task would be implementing movement, right? Definitely. All right, and then there's keeping score, handling collisions, uh, and spawning the pellets, right? You're on the right track, but uh, why don't we go ahead and finish that up later because we have one last step. What's that? You need to create a schedule. A schedule? For what? A couple of reasons, actually. For one, accountability. What? You don't think I'll finish? <laughs> hey, I'm not the one trying to get better at game dev. You gotta be accountable to yourself. I guess I do have a tendency to drop projects before I finish them. Hence why we're going through all of this. Good point. What's the other reason? It's in the same vein. A schedule keeps you on track, especially when you run into hard decisions. So what, a schedule's supposed to force me into making decisions faster so I stay on track? Precisely. And to avoid the dreaded analysis paralysis. I, I get that, but what if I end up making bad decisions because I'm pressed for time? That's the beauty of this whole exercise. You plan a small project, work it to completion, and then look back on it so you can learn from your mistakes. <laughs> oh yeah, it's that easy, huh? Ah, oh, don't worry. It'll be hard at times and you will struggle, but at least now you'll be better prepared to cope with those moments. All right, I'm open to trying anything and this is surprisingly simple. <laughs> I thought you would have had me reading scrum books and adding a bunch of new tools to my workflow. Well, those things do have a place in development, just not for what you are doing. Come back to me when you're on a team of game developers all working on a medium-sized game. That's the dream. Oh, you'll get there. Thanks, man. Anytime. Well, you've got some work to do, so I'll leave you to it. Right, I think I'll set my first milestone for a couple weeks from now. Sounds good, I look forward to seeing it. I'm a little nervous, but uh, we'll see what happens. You'll be fine. I hope. Well, man, thanks again for your help, and as always, I'll catch you later. All right, see you around. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to Alan Caravilla, Amara Duravonic, Christian, DJ Weaver, Dustin, Jennifer Irwin, Mighty Possum, Nav from Academy of Games, Pachar Bungo, Rob Homewood, R Star, Saurabh Chatterjee, Trond, Umut Sarin, Usaf Ali Castle, and Urizer. Thanks, guys.